right, guys, game two of the LRA finals. We are going to have Dai Gurren versus Metal X. Dai Gurren from Team Mafia and Metal X from Team Kraken. So who will go ahead and get the W for their team? Team Kraken definitely needs to go ahead and tie this one up. Currently down one nothing versus Mafia. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into game two. conversation and it looks like it is finally queuing up i'm curious because it took a while to load there so i'm curious to see if it does go right into the game let's see here in just a second who are you spectating digurin, digurin right? yep yeah okay i was about to say did i get this wrong again and it does look like rocketom versus the sp indoor spiders i guess i'll call it indoor spiders it's fine um and this is taking a second to load as well so i'm curious as to if this worked properly or not because i had a feeling because it was taking a little while to load I'm in, there. I'm in there can you see them yeah yeah all right what turn are they on uh turn zero they're doing mulligans oh so that's weird that my screen is showing them loading into the game then uh we're on turn one now oh, all right so it looks like i'm gonna restart the client give me one second everybody uh don't worry, uh, don't worry. i'll baseball radio cast this in the meantime <laughs> On the side of Metal X, we've got a Bark Beast <laughs> down going in for the attack on turn number two. That's right, folks. Turn number two, that is when Metal X is getting the attack token. On the side of Digurin, we're going to throw down a Spa Spring. Going to start healing up the units that we do not have available to us on the field. <laughs> and holy moly, what's this? It's a Cursed Keeper for the Endor Spider player. A Ravenous Butcher would surely be the end of the game, but no, he's safe at second base. No Cursed Keeper coming out. Uh, this is the escaped abomination is going to remain chained inside. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the side of Digur and Rise, no turn three plays available. All of these turn four cards in hand, these Tom Kenches and this Broadback Protector, but it's too little too late. How are you going to fend off the aggression of Metal X? Once he passes priority, folks, I will let you know in real time what is happening on this indoor spider's field. But in the meantime, we're going to see Digur and rope the interaction, staring at a hush is the only playable card, perhaps roping to say, you have no idea what's in my hand. Nani nani boo boo. The priority is over to Metal X, and what are we going to see metal what are you gonna throw out there is it a ravenous butcher is it a callista where are we waiting for a big combo turn what are we going for metal x <laughs> ramping up ramping up ramping up ramping up ramping up and stop it's nothing he hasn't played a damn thing yet maybe he's just gonna float spell mana than the following turn i don't know sjw do you have your game pulled up it's yet it's literally about to load in it took so long to load my friends list now oh my god all right, so we're going to see a rope on the side of Metal X. He's got to have go. something, folks. It is turn three and Endor Spiders. Callista's the only champion. But no, it's nothing. It's a pass over for Metal X as well. Now what big combos will we see coming out this turn? Something's got to kill this Curse Keeper. An open attack will be so, so weak here. Just two damage pushed at the Gur and Rise. You're going to negate all of it with a Broadback Protector. Wow. Oh my wow, Boulevard. That was. I, it's almost like you've done that in a past life or something. I, I don't, <laughs> I, I'm, a little, uh, I'm a little concerned with how well you did that and you had that voice down. So you did say, I mean, you, you were trying to be a voice actor before, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Wow. Good. So I get why. I get why now. <laughs> uh, but we do have uh, Digurin and Metal X going head to head here. So I do apologize about that. Um, and it looks like, see, so I'm getting the hand floating again for some reason. Let me, let me do this. Hold on. Let me see if I, hey. Why is my spectator working perfectly? There we go. There we go. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm streaming um, it. I'm not sure. Maybe that. So that's 14 damage uh, pushed by Metal X here on turn four with that Blighted Caretaker coming down alongside another Bark Beast. Yeah, and already getting the Tom Kench down as well. And, you know, honestly, with how many small units are typically in Indoor Spiders, uh, there's a good shot that this Tom Kench might be leveling pretty fast. We also have the Champion spell in hand because we did draw another Tom Kench. That is uh, not main decked. It's usually not main decked. Uh, so we'll see if we get an early leveled Tom Kench here, which... Could be the difference maker in this game. We could actually even get a Tom Kench that is big enough to devour a They Who Endure. That is not out of the question, especially with cards. As long as cards like Astral Protection exist, that can definitely be a thing. Yeah, and so one thing that I did want to mention is there's only two Hush and Digurin Rise's deck, and lately I think we've been seeing three of those as a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the Wraith Call are going to come down. As we had mentioned earlier, Fearsome plays so, so well into what Dagger and Rise has brought here. You know, Box to Puss is the only organic blocker. Yes, you have Hush to take away Fearsome. Yes, you have things like Bastion and Pale Cascade. But as far as honest to goodness, these are my blockers. That's the only one you've got. And we're going to go for an eat onto the Bark Beast here. Um, instead of something like the Wraith Caller, just trying to make sure that we can still eat something on the following turn, or at least Pale Cascade to provide ourselves a block and not risk the life of our Tom Kench. But honestly, things looking really scary for Metal X here uh, really early on. Down to 5 HP, and while this is a healing deck, there's not a whole lot of face healing available. It's usually just yeah. the Broadback and Guiding Touch. Yeah, and, and honestly, sometimes Tom Rocka isn't even playing Broadback, so it's uh, definitely good that Broadback is in this version that Digurin has um, has ever actually brought. Or wow, wow, I totally, I totally lost my train of thought there. It's very good that Digurin actually put Broadback in this version, going up against something like uh, Indoor Spiders. There we go, there it is. And I was actually yeah. expecting something like Shakedown to come out this turn as well to try to pick off and uh, some of these other smaller units with this broadback protector i mean we can even go ahead and uh, kill this wraith that's on the field with the broadback protector all right so that should be the end of the turn for metal x I, unless he throws down a hapless aristocrat which is not out of question because this is indoor spiders <laughs> uh warden spray also on the table like there's a decent amount of one drops that metal x could have but instead gonna float the two spell mana um, I'd be very surprised if Digurin went for any kind of attack here. I, I mean, it's not necessarily out of the question that he goes for an attack with the Tom Kench because he does have this Pale Cascade and, you know, anything that blocks that's, I mean, the thing that you wanted to eat did get yoinked away from you. So yeah, if you want to try and remove another unit from the field or at first, I, I guess the problem is there's no reason for Metal X to block other than to try to push damage onto the Kench because the two damage doesn't mean anything. This is not the Star Shepherd Zenith Blade version. There's not even Star... Oh, no, there are still Star Shepherds in this list for the trading potential, but it's not a realistic win condition without the Zenith Blades in here. Well, and that's why I mentioned the Shakedown, right? Because then you, you force the blocks on the Metal X. Yep, here comes the Shakedown. So this will allow you to pick off some of these units here, and you're kind of you're going to get the most value... Okay, actually not opting to go in with the broadback, so I guess valuing the heal a little bit more. I don't. Yeah, because he put that he put that vulnerable down onto the. Yeah, that's cult. weird. I would have picked off the the blighted caretaker just to get another unit off the field and just provide yourself with the most kind of damage optimization or preventing the yeah. most damage optimization right now. I mean, so I understand you need to preserve the health of the broadback in order to have it sit around and heal your face. Um, because you are down very, very low very early on. You were sort of already on the cusp of being in that atrocity range, and that is a very scary place to be, especially before we've even made it to the indoor turns. Yeah, well, we'll see what Metal X has here. It's very possible we just get something like another Wraith Caller or just more units to go wide here and just go in for, for lethal. Yeah, uh, this is... This is going to give the two challenge units, and this means that 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage, as long as I can count right, is going to go ahead and get through here. And I don't... Uh, all right, that does provide another blocker, but that's still only going to be... That's still enough for lethal, and there's no heal right now. I've already, I've been spoiled by the eye too much already. I wish that in an open board state, I could hover the eye and see how much damage a full-on attack is. <laughs> oh, oh, right, right, right. Every wait, piece we... of math for me. Wait, can we? Yeah, here we go. Boom. Got it. We got the eye. Now we have the eye. I want, when both players are sitting there not doing anything, I want to be able to hover that eye and see how much damage whoever has the attack token can possibly push out. We got the eye, baby. Let's go. And you know what I realized, too, with the hovering? So I think the issue with it was when I pull my mouse down, it actually keeps it hovered. So like, cause I have to use my streaming client. So I actually have to make sure I go around the hand and down. <laughs> so that is why that was happening. So that problem was solved. That is not a bug. Uh, but I mean, I think this is still just lethal. Yeah, I, I, there's I nothing. Anything. I mean, I guess if you hush the bark beast, you live at one, but the star spring is so far away from actually winning the game no ash or protections just yet yeah and i don't i mean you obviously it's a very suboptimal way to go ahead and use the hush and being at one versus a deck like endure spiders definitely not good we could already even have an atrocity in hand that would just end the game um well, luckily the atrocity isn't on the yeah. table this turn and we are still going to get a little bit of additional heal out of this 
broadback protector. We can't even buy you brunch anything in order to get this broadback back up to a healthy life total. You know, just not finding Astro Protection. The rocket next turn is... Oh, no, we just have Unspeakable Horror for lethal. Okay, okay well, that is going to be <laughs> the end of the game. <laughs> Uh, a little a little anticlimactic there. Don't forget to uh, exit out of the spectating lobby so that you can get back in no problem when they do start up the next game. Yeah, so I think one of the other issues I was getting into was I think I need to... Wait, no, it still says they're in-game. I, I think that means that they're in the lobby. So what does it change to when they're actually playing? It doesn't. It doesn't. Damn it. I'm going to try spectating Dagger in here and see... Because I feel like whatever I spectated prior to them actually being in the game was when it has issues. That's just maybe. Like, yes, I'll, I'll find out here because I feel like I fired this off really early. Nope, nope good. I'm good. You're good. Are they getting in? Yep. Yeah, they're yeah, they're they're on turn. They're doing mulligans. Okay, cool. So I'll got get it. TF go. Swain versus Karma Lux. So Karma Lux is a deck that I have been talking up for a while, and I kind of conceded that okay, no one else is catching on to this Boulevard. This is just your obsession with Lux showing through again. It's not meta relevant. People aren't gonna play it. Stop trying to make Karma Lux happen. But no, Karma Lux is happening. And we even see a go get it in here, which is um, really kind of weird to me. I mean, it can give you. Uh, no, this is just weird to me. Can we can we can we back up for a second though? Because yeah. I, have a, I have a problem. Okay. Metal X is playing TF Swain right now. Uh huh. So the dragons got banned. The the Shivana Aurelian Soul deck <laughs> got banned. Can we, like, like what is happening right now? Why are we... Look, sometimes you oh, just ban the man. hush deck. I mean, Jeez. so looking looking at Dagger and Rise's lineup, it kind of makes sense, right? I don't think Tom Kench Rocka beats dragons. No, I don't think they do either. And Ash Thresh is a little bit of a question mark, honestly. Uh, Karma Lux, I'm not super confident in it. I think you could just get overwhelmed on board there, especially with them having access to things like Bastion. Wow, I, we're in a world where Shivana just got banned. Okay, well... Here you, here you have it, folks. We're on turn three now, <laughs> and uh, Metal X gonna go ahead and use the removal there. We'll see. Yep, looks like we got Petty Officer, and Petty Officer still getting a fair amount of play. Definitely one of the better one drops we could have gotten there with the Fleet Feather Tracker, yeah. and uh, obviously instantly activating that Challenger there. Pretty nice how that kind of works when you do play the Petty Officer, and you know, I really thought this card would drop off, but the ability to just go wide very fast i guess it's still pretty good for this card in general with the uh, the decks that it's still currently played in yeah it's a little strange i mean petty officer i don't think is really played a whole lot in tf swain anymore make it rain is still a little bit up in the air he has gone for two copies of both of those but we are still just you know very aggressively curved only two zap spray fin uh just a little bit of an oddity that i noticed but yeah still going for the two riptide wrecks saying the nerf doesn't bother me that much and i was wondering if tf swain was going to look at this riptide rex nerf and say okay you know we already started to put in crusty codgers some players playing jagged butchers do we just cut riptide rex go for captain farron and really sort of lean all in on this aggro strategy that we seem to be tipping towards yeah, and Riptide Rex, another, you know, I'm glad you brought that up, Boulevard. Riptide Rex, another card that received a change recently nerfed to be a 6 4. And I, honestly, uh, this is the first cast I've done where we could potentially see the new and not improved, the new and deep, deeproved, uh, <laughs> Dis disimproved. disimproved, I don't know, whatever word you want to use there. Riptide Rex now being a 6 4 and not just being a 6 4, but also only getting 6 cannon barrages now so curious to see how impactful that is i do imagine it will matter and uh, the six cannon barrages will matter the most in that it won't clear wide boards as consistently as it used to and it might not even clear even like two units as consistently as it used to depending on how large those units actually are i'm trying to think of if there's a word for what we want to say because unimproved just means it wasn't improved not that it was the opposite of improved don't ask me to speak english are you crazy that's fair. So the one thing that I did want to mention with the Riptide Rex as well, specifically in Twisted Fate Swain, is that the even if the extra cannon barrage doesn't necessarily impact how the board is played out, if you had a Swain on board, that a little bit of extra push did represent another stun. That could be absolutely game-breaking. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. We do see good old Betty Croker hitting the field, though. Uh, that is, man, nobody respects the... All these one health units, you know, there, there's so little removal for wide boards like this nowadays. I, I feel like 
withering whale is a thing man like people need to start playing that card but yeah digger and rise how dare you not play withering <laughs> whale in your karma lux no deck? i know but but even so now you look at the karma lux deck there is and you see that there's no judgment there's no judgment so, so judgment cannot clear the field but there's really no way to deal with a wide field like this so the wider metal x goes which is clearly why we're playing that dreadway deck and to go for an open attack here the the better off he is he can just push through even more damage yeah, and he, he is so willing to go as wide as possible that he just even throws his keg out the window and says, you know what, we don't need that. Um, we're the best player in the game. We don't need that, my man. Let's just go in all in on face. And what is this, nine damage being represented? That's going to put... What is it with Metal X and putting his opponent down to five this early on? <laughs> Dude, listen, he's a, he's an aggro player at heart, all right? He's a man Well, that's going to get the Radiant Guardian down, and now the stabilization gets to start as we do have single combat and concerted strike. Luck's going to be able to come down on the following turn, and this is the turning point unless we get to see... I mean, even if we do see the Ravenous Flock here, at least the single combat gets to come out and get us at least a little bit higher. Yeah, I'm curious, though... Do you play the flock this turn? Because you need flock and something else because of tough. So do yeah. you play the flock this turn? So you go. Could be an execute. It, okay, yeah, it could be something. Actually, there are two scorched earth. Yeah, I was gonna say you did mention earlier playing the scorched earth uh, to kind of tech against that rocket tom, which, ironically enough, Daguerre is playing rocket tom. Uh, we did switch it up because it lost so terribly in that first game. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see if that comes to play uh, if if we do get into a third game here. I actually am curious to see how much of an impact Scorch Earth makes, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, it's late here. It is interesting. You know, Metal X definitely feels like he got the better of the pick ban phase. He was able to take out the Zombie Ash, so the Withering Whale that you had mentioned off the table, and got left with two very aggressive, very wide board-centric decks against Karma Lux and Rock Atom, probably two of the worst decks in the format for dealing with that kind of strategy. Yeah, and like you said, I think you're I think you're accurate in saying that Rock Atom is, is probably one of the best decks, if not the best deck in the game right now. I mean, it, it obviously has a clear weakness in things like fearsome and super aggressive decks like we saw with the endurance fighters but it and i like that yeah i like when your yep. potential best deck in the game has a very clear weakness yep yeah so when it's that polarized that shows me it's it's a balanced metagame uh because yeah the best deck loses to the really aggressive deck or the really aggressive deck loses to this deck that stacks heal right so oh my gosh and now you're wow. seeing the arachnoid sentry saying you get absolutely no room to breathe here wow potentially going to be able to take out three units on the following turn between detain concerted strike and a block um but that is a really big commitment to still take five damage yeah this is <laughs> metal x just going balls to the wall here just going all out Trying to deal as much damage as possible, as quickly as possible. Got rid of the Radiant Guardian, so did good work there. Obviously, the single combat is what is keeping... Single combat is doing work for Digurn right now. Being able yeah. to basically just give him that little last string of hope to stay alive in this game. But it's not going to be for much longer. I think if we go ahead and use this beautiful eye here, uh, we get to see that Digurn does live with two health if we do opt to go ahead and play this single combat. I gotta get used to having my mouse hovering over this eye. This is beautiful. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm so used to the players doing yeah. it for me where, you know, I was begging for this spectator mode and now I'm like, eh, you know, I want the players to do the work. I can see their emotes. Let me see what they're hovering. So it is gonna be the concerted strike single combat. This is stacked properly so that uh, we are going to level the Lux and survive with a little bit of additional HP. We also have the Prismatic Barrier still available in order to prevent any kind of removal, or at least damage-based removal that could come out of Metal X this turn. Uh, or we could just save it as that second Lux on backup. But this is where, you know, maybe we start to see a bit of a comeback from Digurin. It is still a very uphill battle. There is a decent amount of burn. And, I mean, it's turn 8. We could even just see Riptide fired off here and end the game. Yeah, well, and I again, you know, w with Riptide being changed, if it's ending the game or if it's coming out at a point where, you know, Digurin is on the back foot, we're about to probably just go in for an attack on the next turn to win the game. If it's coming out this late to end the game, we can't really say right now whether or not Riptide, if that change to Riptide made a bit, that big of an impact. Because uh, obviously, I mean, we've seen Riptide finish games plenty of times in the past. So we'll see if that's going to be the case here on turn eight. And right now there's really no way for Digurin to heal up any more uh, than they already have. We are going to be no. able to remove this field though. Yeah. 
Uh, so we do have that going for us, but it's just, I mean, any eight drop here is essentially a death sentence. Yeah, the Riptide is going to be lethal. Even through the Prismatic Barrier, six shots is exactly what you need through that barrier. And even if it was a Leviathan, that's still going to get that start of round deal three. And then Daigurin has to pre-commit man onto removing it. But it is the Riptide. You know, the first instance that we see him, he comes wow. down for lethal. Yep. So, again, not really getting to see a good representation of Riptide there, unfortunately. But, uh, so, we're correct now in saying that was a 2-0. <laughs> All right, Metal X taking it there. Gonna tie it up for Team Kraken. So 1-1, one, one, Team Kraken versus Team Mafia Esports. We'll see how game three pans out. Make sure you subscribe, turn on the bell, get notified when that game does go live. And as always, everybody, stay healthy, stay positive. I hope it just works for you. And peace out.